Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our play-by-play -play broadcast. Charlie Slows, Dave Jangler with you. Matt Adams leads off and loops one into left center field. That's going to drop in a base hit. Charlie, you are the voice of the Nationals. Mm -hmm. How in the heck does someone become the voice of a sports team like this? Well, you have to persevere and get a little lucky. Have, have a combination of both. I mean, I started out wanting to do this. No, knew I wanted to do this when I was 13, 14 years old. So back then you could take cassette recorders and a microphone and go to a game and sit in a seat like this and hope you don't annoy anybody while you're doing your own broadcast. I got hooked on baseball when I was about seven years old. Which team? The Mets. Okay. But it was only by accident because, you know, I was a little kid and I came home in the afternoon my, from school and my cartoons were preempted by games. <laughs> Here's the pitch, swinging a ground ball off the leg of Wainwright, but kicks right to the first baseman. And it's picked up by Goldschmidt. I've never seen anything like this, Charlie. This is, this is crazy that this is your office. Basically. Um, wide open view and sky. You have a bird's eye view, but this is really business also. And I'm seeing tons of numbers and data and all this here. What do you use? Well, this is basically my scorebook for the game. It kind of starts out like this blank. Okay. You know, it's forms for visiting team and the home team. When the game's over, it looks like that. Time spent between the time I get to the ballpark and the time the game starts, this will all start to fill in. See, I've got some of it done already in the standings. That's some major prep work. You know, yes. you don't just come in, plop down and say, ladies and gentlemen, here are the Nats. I mean, that's a lot of work. No, and then, you know, each team you play. Uh -huh. Like today's I, the Cardinals. I right. see Cardinals here. So this is hours spent condensing biographical notes. You've been doing this for more than three decades, but sometimes does it still just hit you? Everything you watched on TV or listened to as a kid mostly wasn't live unless it was like all news radio. Everything was a, a, a taped program, a movie, or a TV show. And the thing about a sporting event, whether you were watching it or listening to it on the radio, was the magic of a live event with a crowd that reacts to what happens in the game. And whether it was baseball or another sport, I, I just fell in love with it. You got a big break very early in your life and career. You started announcing for what, the NBA when you were just 25? Yes. The, the really big break was a year out of college. Uh, I went to KMOX in St. Louis. And that was a, a, a titanic break for me. And so I got to be around and watch and learn while I was breaking into the business. So that was great. And it was, you know, the, the reputation of KMOX stays with you when they see it on your resume. And, Next thing I know, I was I, I got a chance to do a national game for CBS Radio the first year they were doing the CBS Radio baseball game of the week. Did you week. have the butterflies in your stunt? Were you thinking, oh my God, I am nationwide? I, I didn't even have time. I found out at like one in the morning the night before. You start in this, I don't know, gymnasium somewhere, and then you ascend to something like this. It's just a wild ride. Well, it's crazy. You know, you talk about having the tape recorders or doing public address for your high school games. You know, that's what I try to tell anyone who's trying to get into the business. Do anything and everything that you can, and don't think it's too crazy. Five doubles, a triple, three homers, and five runs batted in. So many times we've heard radio is dead. Yet I see you've had this job for three-plus decades, and so there is that draw back. Well, you know, as long as people are interested in sports, and particularly baseball is the, the quintessential radio sport because a quintessential sport to listen to on radio period because if it's on in the garage while you're doing something it's on in the house while you're moving around you kind of be on as your accompaniment because we're it's the sport where you can describe the action have interaction with your partner on the air and tell stories all at once where you get to put your personality into the broadcast you, you can have a rapport with your partner you can have fun and then you can be real serious when the game gets real busy and you're describing the action and you're you're the bearer of good news or bad news when it's all said and done <laughs> at the end of the day we're providing information but we're also entertainers that one low and outside with a fastball one ball one strike i wonder why this has kept you around for 30 plus years what do you love about your job everything charlie you say this is your favorite time of the day i love it it's the calm before the storm the empty park the grounds crews get in the field ready. Yeah. You're going to have batting practice in, in a little bit. First the home team, then the visitors. It's when we get to come down, talk to the players around the cage, the coaches, the manager, you know, 
fill in the blanks of some of the material that you may use during the broadcast.